This is truly like the stock market. The produce market is truly, it's up, it's down, it's sideways. You know, you come in, you think you're gonna be out on this and you're long, you gotta make moves. There's never a dull moment here. There's always something, something going on. So it's 5, it's 5 a.m. now. We have loads show up almost 24-7. They come overnight, they come during the day. We're gonna open a container and start loading out one of the rooms. These bananas come from Costa Rica. Costa Rica bananas are basically your ideal banana. So these containers, they're harvested and packed at the country of origin. So this container was sitting at the plantation or the farm in Costa Rica. They close the doors, they seal it up, they turn it on, set it to 50, somewhere between 56 and 58 degrees to hold the fruit at its right temperature and then shipped up to the Port of Wilmington in Delaware. After the Port of Wilmington in Delaware, this is the first stop in the U.S. where these bananas are being seen. So once we open the container, they gotta go away into our pressurized room, which kind of is the first step in the process. Also, when we open up a container, we're gonna pulp the banana, make sure it's not pulping too high or too low. So we gotta make sure that the bananas are at an appropriate internal temperature. If it was, let's say that they pulled 64 degrees, the container broke on its way up from the Delaware port, we might have to reject the fruit because it's not going to be to our spec or the right quality. And as we're unloading the container, we're looking at boxes, we're popping them down to make sure that there's no defects, that there's no ripe fruit uh, that might show trouble with, throughout the load. So this is a pulp thermometer. We want to measure the internal temperature of the fruit. When I say pulp, I mean the inside of the banana, so right in here. If this banana was too cold, when I peel back the skin and you get to this layer, this is going to be gray. It's not going to be this nice bright green. So this is a very healthy piece of fruit. And, it, and it's pulping at 59, 58, 7 degrees. That's exactly the right temperature we want to see. You know, that's, that's really what we're looking for. We're looking for the internal temperature of the banana to make sure it's within our specs and uh, that it's high quality fruit. Yeah, so these look good. We're not going to stop checking the container, but it's a good initial sign that we can keep unloading it, you know, and have our men at least unload it, probably start putting it into rooms. And then, you know, if we see any trouble, we'll obviously reevaluate. I love bananas, uh, eat a lot of bananas, mostly in smoothies. I've probably actually cut back recently on my banana consumption, just being around them all the time, but still one of my favorite fruits. Bananas are grown on really massive farms and plantations in uh, Central and South America. In Costa Rica, they have the harvesters going all around and they're coming down, they're chopping it down off the, off the plant, putting it on a rack, and then the rack or the pulley system kind of pulls it all the way back to the processing facility. They're washed, they're processed, they're, they're dried off, then they're bagged, and they're put in a box, and then the box is put on a pallet. That pallet is then wrapped, put on a container, the container's sealed, and then it comes right to us. So probably from, I would say from harvesting to us, about 14 days. So now we're taking the fresh bananas off this container. They just came from the port. And we're gonna put them in the pressurized room and we're gonna start processing them for next week's sales. When we put them in the room, we gas them for 24 hours. Then we don't open up the room until after the 24 hours. When we put them in the room, we're gonna put them at 58 degrees, an ideal holding temperature. They can take temperatures as low as 56, but the ideal temperature to at least hold the banana at its current state before processing is 58 degrees. When I say processing, I mean starting the ethylene gas. So this is an ethylene gas machine. We fill it up with liquid ethylene gas, uh, and this is what's gonna tell the banana it's time to ripen. And then what happens is this machine turns on, emits the ethylene gas. And the way this room is designed, it's gonna suck the gas up and push it all the way down through the sides. The boxes are designed with these holes so the air can pass through the fruit. You, you're going to be able to feel the air being pushed out of all these boxes through these holes. The ethylene gas is a naturally occurring gas. In these boxes, before I turn the gas machine on, there's tons of ethylene gas. That's just what the fruit emits to ripen. Every section, every box is the exact same temperature. These things are programmed very specifically to make sure that this room is the exact temperature that we need it to be so that these, all these bananas ripen in a very uniform fashion. Let's say we set it at 58 degrees and that banana is pulping 59 degrees, it's going to tell the refrigeration or the heat to push down a little bit colder air to bring that internal temperature of the fruit down to where we need it to be. These are fresh bananas now and we're going to keep them at 58 degrees.
You know, the produce industry is not the most technological advanced, so we had a, we had a custom system for, for decades that worked great, but it didn't work as good as it could. So we made a huge investment in our internal software. So this is just how we control and manage our temperatures. So I can get a reading on what I have everything set at, what the space is at, and I can go in. We have certain alarms for two degrees, uh, de two degrees of separation between what the set point is and the actual space temperature. If it goes above that, we get an alert so we can just check on the fruit. I can tweak uh, the temperature. So like, let's say I need a little bit more color. I'll bring up the temperature a little bit. A half a degree in a banana, it makes a huge difference. The difference between 59 and 59 and a half makes a difference. In the fruit. This is all the banana rooms, the dates that I put them in. What's gas? These are fresh. See, I keep track of everything. This is the old fashioned one. So now we're going to take these bananas out of this room and we're going to bring them down the block so they can go out tonight and tomorrow. So these are the bananas that have already been processed in our rooms. They've you know, gone, they've been unloaded, put in the rooms, temperature controlled, ripened. The ethylene gas has told the banana it's time to ripen. And now we're gonna take a look at the color, see what they look like, make sure it's the right color for the customer. So this is like 75% yellow, 25% green. So you have the nice break on the banana, on the, on the front and the back, but you still have the green on the underside and also the tips, green tips are important. So if we call this a two and a half, then you'll get into a three and a half. And then this is a four. So somewhere between here and here, is where it's gonna end up in your store or maybe in your delivery if you're getting it direct. There's seven colors. I should qualify that every customer has a different chart. This is the one we use mostly, where it goes from a one fresh off the container all the way up to a seven, which is like what you would use in banana bread. So we're going from totally green, 100% green, a dark rock hard banana right off the container, all the way through the process. So these are, these are processed but fresh. So this is as close to a one off the, like a uh, processed banana as you can get. You can see a little bit of break on the shoulder. It has a nice even green on it. And then for and then as you move from this to like a real number two, very similar feel. It has more give. It's not gonna snap the same way that one snaps, but you can see on the sides of the hands, it has break throughout. So this is what we would call on the turn. So this is a two color with nice shoulder break. This is gonna turn into this, which is in a day and then this in another day. So the difference between all of these is about 24 hours. So if I ship this to a wholesaler, then the retailer is going to get this and then this is going to be on your shelf. You know, a very important part of the supply chain is making sure our customers know how to handle that fruit. The handling from when it leaves our facility to the store is very important. It's not hard to set up a nice display for bananas because you can use these boxes. The way the boxes are set up, you can just flip the box over, take off the lid, and the bananas almost lay out in a nice presentation. When the bananas are like way too brown, like they should have already been removed, or they're just thrown all over the place and it's not full, like it's just patchy with like color here, green here, that, that irks me. Like I probably have pictures on my phone of like shitty banana displays. Like this, is, I was just walking into a store and I saw the bananas floating around like this. Like this is not what you want to see. And it, it doesn't take much effort to kind of get it to a point where, where it's displayed a little bit more appropriately. Like you have all mixed colors throughout. You got green bananas in here. You got bananas that probably should have been tossed over here. I'm not going to say it, but I remember where this was. It's not our customer. You know, there's not much money in a case of bananas at all. That's one of the reasons why we specialize in ripening. Having the ability for some of our partners to pair our bananas with a bunch of other maybe higher margin commodities is really kind of the, the base of our business. You know, another good item for us is plantains. So these are plantains coming right off the ship. Similar to a banana, but a much tougher fruit. You can tell, I mean, they're individual. Again, rock hard, a nice green color, something we're looking at. They're definitely fresh plantains. You can tell just how they feel. They're pulping at the right temperature. They're gonna, like the banana, gonna have a nice snap. It's just, uh, it's a similar fruit, but they, you know, they ripen differently, they behave differently, and they're, you know, that's just the nature of how, how much more tough this piece of fruit is than a banana. The main difference between a banana and a plantain is in the structure of the fruit plantain is naturally just more starchy. You're not gonna really bite into a ripe plantain, although you could, it doesn't taste bad. That's just usually there's more cooking done to a plantain, so more prepared in a dish rather than eaten as like a piece of fruit. So these are relatively fresh. They're in the process of being gassed. And then this is gonna be the finished product. So this is exactly what customers are looking for. This nice full yellow, 
but nothing really beyond this. Once it gets beyond it, it could get, you know, all the imperfections really show, but this is a nice, even box, well packed. You still have some green tips uh, on the fruit, and then you can see on the inside, it's got the give, and then that is kind of the consistency you're looking for in a ripe plantain. When I started here, I was I was a porter. I was unloading trucks. Most of the same people that are here now were here when I was 16. Kind of taught me, especially Joe. I mean, everything I've learned, I've learned from uh, from Joe. So this is Joe, the owner of uh, Top Banana and future father-in-law. He's been coming to the market since. I don't know how old. Yeah, 25 years ago, um, I was a customer of this market. I used to unload, I had a route. I was a job, I used to go out and have trucks. And I used to pick up my bananas here. It used to be a company called Strick Bananas. And I used to tease Mr. Strick and I used to tell him, when you want to retire, I'm gonna buy the place off you. So I came up and uh, I made a deal with him and um, I'm living my dream. So I guess the moral of the story is, be careful with your extra, because you might get it. So these bananas fully processed, ready to go. This is the right color for what we need for tonight. So we move it down the block to our main warehouse. So it's easier for customers to pick up, easier to load the house trucks. The volume of bananas you know, changes per week. So one week our biggest customer is, might not be the biggest customer the next week. The biggest category is definitely independent retailers. Then second biggest category would be other wholesalers. We don't do a ton of food service, so that's kind of where Baldor comes in, that's like our food service customer. And then Baldor will give it to different chefs, restaurants, bakeries. We just got our fresh banana delivery from Top Bananas. We're gonna make our famous banana pudding. So we're going to start with our, obviously our famous sweet banana pudding base. So we have our, obviously our, our secret mix of what we use, which is our pudding consistency. And then it's whipped cream, which we fold in. We're going to add our wafer cookies. We just coat the entire bottom. So this is actually our most popular item. Uh, it's what we're famous for. People kind of travel all around the world just to kind of get this one item, which is actually really cool. We make banana pudding um, literally every single day. Um, we probably use maybe 30 cases of bananas on a daily basis. About 15 uh, bananas go into one tray of pudding. We go through like 10 to 20 trays a day, depending on the location that we're at. So there we go, we have our first layer, and that's about four or five bananas in just that one. And we do about three layers of this. Here's my son, he's just walking uh, in, he came from upstairs. You know, that's, a, that's the future, my son, my daughter, and my son-in-law, that, that's the future here. And, you know, hopefully, you know, they can bring in another 50 years and, you know, we go to the next generations.